What's up y'all, Talon here. Today we're back with another series of ranked battles featuring top teams in the Regulation H metagame. Today we have a team that Steven Brown was able to take to a day two performance, seven four overall at the uh, Louisville Regional Championship. It's a pretty strong Tailwind team with an interesting addition in the Cryagonal. First time I've seen this Pokemon relevant in any, any metagame since probably 2011. Even then it was really scraping the bottom of the barrel. So it's got a very uh, unique niche in a Levitate Pokemon that can outspeed Garchomp as well, so it's a really solid stop to Garchomp in a lot of ways. If you want to use the team for yourself, I have the rental code in the top right of the video as well as in the description below. I have the EV spread that I recreated for the team. I'm not sure if Steven has recreated or uh, released the EV spreads for his really cool Cryogonal team, but if he does, I'll have that pinned in the comments below. Check that out, and yeah, if you guys enjoy these type of videos, please subscribe, leave a like on the video, and let me know which team you want to see me pilot on the Battle Stadium ladder next. And yeah, with all that being said, let's hop into a breakdown of the team now. I think the core of the team is definitely the Talonflame Garchomp and Talonflame Goldengo. If you lead either of those most games, you're going to be pretty happy with the outcome, doing a lot of spread damage early on to chip things down for either the Tyranitar or the one of Garchomp or Goldengo that you didn't bring in the back. That's generally a pretty solid strategy. You also have Taunt and Will-O-Wisp on the Talonflame for anything that's able uh, to kind of squirm out of your position against the Garchomp or Goldengo. Um, Brave Bird also really solid against Sneasler. Cragonal is the next Pokemon in the team, and it's a really cool option when you don't want to bring Talonflame. You just want to go straight up offense. Um, and the speed control is really nice. You outspeed other Garchomps. You can go for Icy Wind plus Earthquake. A lot of them are Terra Fire or Terra Steel. So Icy Wind plus Earthquake will should knock them out whether they go for the Terrestrialization or not. And Icy Wind means you're going to be outspeeding them as like unless they are clear amulet, and then it's just a speed tie. Freeze dry is okay damage, but you also have haze uh, as a supporting option. If you get tailwind up, you can go for haze against Dondozo. Whether they're terra water or terra grass, freeze dry is going to do a lot of damage after you've gone for that haze. And overall, just a very cool Pokemon with a very strong niche in the metagame that uh, Steven was able to find. So definitely hats off to him. We also have Tyranitar, which is a really solid answer against trick room teams, particularly the psychic spam trick room teams with all the psychic type moves. Don't love Facing up against Assault Vest Tyranitar, you also have Terra Blast with Terra Flying to serve as a defensive Terra, uh, becoming resistant to fighting type moves that would otherwise want to KO you, as well as being able to become immune to ground types from other Garchomp or your own Garchomp's Earthquake. You also do a lot of damage to things like Amoongus, which can be kind of annoying, and also just one-hit KO Sneasler, bring it down to the Focus Sash, uh, and then allow your Sandstorm to KO it, so that's a cool option there. Gastrodon is going to be your main defensive Pokemon in the team with the Citrus Berry it's able to take a pretty big hit and then heal back up and then just start spreading yawns. Usually you're going to switch in your Gastrodon when you're in a weak defensive position with the Garchomp or Goldengo. Switch in the Gastrodon and then just threaten something with an Earth Power or an Ice Beam so uh, generally going to be if you feel like you're weak defensively in a matchup it's going to be Gastrodon that comes in if it's not Tyranitar. Once again if you're interested in using the team I have the EV spreads in the description below along with the uh, rental code in the top right of the video if you want to take it on the battle stadium ladder. If you enjoy these type of videos uh, leave a like on the video subscribe for more and let me know which team you want to see featured next. Hope you guys enjoy and with all that being said let's get into the battles now. Okay my opponent has a really wild trick uh rain team rather Three potential rain abusers in the Poly Whirl, I believe that is. Not Poly Wrath. Pelipper. Oh, goodness. Um, Toxicroak, Vasculegion, Indeedee, Male, and Dragapult. Okay. So we at least have... Oh my god. Gastron's really solid here. Um, kind of. It's probably Eviolite, Haze, Swift Swim, Poly Whirl as a Dondozo counter. So I doubt that comes. Uh, I'd imagine they rely a bit harder on... Given I have Gastro in the back, they might... Ugh, Tyranitar is really solid here, truthfully. Cryo is pretty good, too. I kind of like Tailwind plus Garchomp as a lead. Because a lot of their Pokemon. Tyranitar in the back is kind of a must. And the only question is if I go Cryogonal or Gastrodon. No Gastro into Rain is, like, kind of crazy. But at the same time, if they're going to bring the Dragapult, the Cryogonal is way better. So I think I will bring that. Um, honestly, I'm not a huge fan of Gastron on this team. Even when I want to bring it, it's not that sturdy. Maybe it is just like your Dondozo counter, but eh, not really because you have Haze Cryogonal. I'm not really sure what the Gastro is doing. If I was going to try and iterate on this team, I might replace the Gastrodon with another offensive option just because it hasn't been coming a bit, uh, coming really consistently for me, but I might just not have played the matchups where it is necessary to bring, so... We'll see. We could have the issue where they're a Scarf Adaptability 
Jolly Basque Legion and our Tyranitar speed ties it. I believe that's an issue for this team where um, I didn't EV the Tyranitar correctly to outspeed that. But we will see. It could easily just be Swift Swim and it's not a problem. Okay, they do actually bring the Poliwhirl and the Rain Pokemon, which I was not really expecting, truthfully. Uh, that's not ideal by any means. Okay. Gastro in the back would go off here. Let's go Tailwind though. Um, the Poliwhirl is like low key a little menacing, but I think I will just go for a Dragon Claw into it, get, get some damage off. We're into the Pelipper. Yeah, let's damage the Pelipper, I think. They probably, like, on the... There was a Polyrath team that I believe got top 8 at a Latin American regional. And it was, I think, Choice Band uh, Ice Punch. But this is a Poliwhirl. So, I don't really know what the deal is here. They're going for a Terra. Interesting. The thing is, Gastro would be such a free switch here. Like a will o -Wisp plus Gastro switch would be solid. Ground, okay, could have Earthquaked. Fair enough. Why would you go for Terra Ground? I guess if I'm threatening Rock Slide, that's an option, so I'm glad we burned that option early. But Earthquake would have been really solid for me. Oh, okay. I'll take that. Yeah, that was pretty lucky. I guess we'll never find out what they were going for with that. But absolutely works for me. I definitely should have just gone for Earthquake for consistent damage, but I... Okay, Icy Wind, sure. Shouldn't do a lot, maybe like 50%. Yeah, not even. So we're still going to be outspeeding, maybe not the Poliwhirl, but everything else. Covert Cloak, they have not lowered the speed on the uh, Talonflame, which is cool. So I'm just going to go for a Will-O-Wisp and an Earthquake. Rain's up, Basque Legion's outspeeding me, unfortunately but not my Talonflame, so if they go for Wave Crash, we'll at least get the Will-O-Wisp off instead of... Uh, if they go for Aqua Jet, they knock out the Talonflame. If they're Banded, I would imagine we still live the Aqua Jet just barely. If we do hit the Will-O-Wisp, that's very, very fortunate. Especially since they didn't go for Aqua Jet, they're probably Wave Crashing and taking a ton of recoil whoever they hit, which I'm happy about. Ooh, Icy Wind again. They missed the Talonflame, not the Garchomp though, which means the Basque Legion will be moving first here. Yep, Wave Crash, pretty big hit into the Town Flame, but that's a lot of recoil, about uh, about 45-ish HP on the Basque Legion, which they're going to take another Earthquake, they're going to take some Burn Chip, and then I bring my Town, my, uh, yeah, my Tyranitar in. Tailwind active, and we get busy. Okay, yeah. Like I said, the Wave Crash just knocks out the Basque Legion. That's kind of why I don't love Pokemon like Basque Legion, Tauros, Coridon, etc., where their strongest attack most general situations just does so much damage to them. Uh, it's kind of a problem a lot of the time. Let's go Tyranitar, just reverse the weather. It could go Cryogonal, I guess, but eh, doesn't seem correct. Like if they bring in Choice Band, uh, okay, interesting. Interesting. I think at this point, I guess Sucker Punch Toxic Croak would be my main fear in this battle, but Terra Blast should just cover me. If I knock out the Toxicroak with Terror Blast, which I should, um, then Garchomp should be able to Earthquake and clean up in the endgame. I guess maybe it's like Choice Scarf Poliwhirl. I've only seen them go for Icy Winds, but I think it's likely not the case. Who knows how this battle would have gone if they had not gone for the uh, Terra Ground on the Pelipper. I'm not sure what the intention was there. Because, like, I'm not ever rock sliding there. I don't think that's really my best play. Uh, and it's such an uncommon option on Garchomp regardless. But yeah, they did have the Toxic Croak uh, Sucker Punch, so we navigate around that, and I think Freeze Dry Karagonal should just KO the Poliwhirl. Interesting Pokemon there. Um, maybe if they're Choice Specs on the... I suppose Choice Specs Pelipper would be kind of cool. Maybe they're going for... Okay, Hypnosis. Yeah, definitely not Choice Scarf. Yeah, that makes sense. Support, Poliwhirl, Eviolite, Hypnosis, maybe Haze. A lot of cool stuff there. If that was a Choice Specs um, on the Pelipper and I don't crit the Dragon Claw, they probably knock out my Garchomp in one hit. With, I assume, they went for Terra Blast because it seemed like they were covering for Gastrodon a lot this game. But, yep, didn't have it. And we should just clean up with Freeze Dry here. I think I got pretty lucky on the Dragon Claw, but 
Um, honestly, even if they KO me with the Terror Blast on the Garchomp, or if they go for Weather Ball, I don't think it should really matter that much in the grand scheme of things because the Pelipper is in range of a Brave Bird, and my switching can probably just KO the Poliwhirl. Unless they hit a Hypnosis and I for some reason don't KO it, we should be fine there. I do think, yeah, once again, like I didn't bring the Gastron against Rain and it felt fine, so... Although there was team pre preview pressure, of course, they were less tempted to go for their rain offensive options with the Gastron on the back. So, you know, there is some presence there, but I do feel like I would maybe go for something a little more tangible on that six slot if I were going to be re rebuilding the team uh, myself. Okay, my opponent has a Murkrow Tailwind team with Garchop, Ninetales, Incineroar, and Sinistra. Pretty interesting team for sure. Uh, defensively... I think Tyranitar is going to be my best bet against most of their Pokemon. It's solid against the Typhlosion, the Ninetales, really everyone on, the, on their team, actually. So I do like the Tyranitar as I lead a fair bit. I uh, should beat everything except for the Garchomp, I think. Like Talonflame plus the Tyranitar seems pretty solid, or uh, Garchomp solid as well. I think I will go with the Garchomp Tailwind lead and then the Tyranitar in the back as a strong switch in option. And then I'm a little weak to, you know what, honestly, Garchomp. So I could bring the Cry Cryogonal here. I think Gastron, if they have Freeze Dry, is kind of a liability against the Ninetales. It's not that strong. So I'm going to go with Cryogonal, actually. Yeah, it actually feels correct here, honestly. Like, in a lot of situations, when I'm doing these battles, it's like, okay. Um, to some extent, the weird Pokemon is often a matchup mon that you don't play that often but when it needs to come it's very very um useful but i think garchomp is just one of the more popular pokemon in the metagame right now so it being a matchup mon specifically specifically for that you're gonna get a lot of uh, usage out of it also i'm able to go for icy wind protect against something that would otherwise be i don't know maybe threatening yeah we'll see it's not even that bad against the typhlosion if like worst case i need to icy wind it to get a rock slide off later on in the game I can go for that for sure, if it's a Choice Scarf or a Choice Specs Typhlosion. Okay, Incineroar Sinistra wasn't really what I was expecting, but that's why I didn't lead the Tyranitar uh, immediately. I think I can go for Taunt Earthquake though, and I will go for that. Well, Machagotch is kind of annoying, right? Let's go Taunt Earthquake. They could fake out the Talonflame trying to dodge any uh, flying type moves, but more likely a Taunt. But we have Covert Cloak. You might think Safety Goggles looking at this team just because of the presence of Tyranitar, but nope, in this circumstance we are actually the Covert Cloak. So a little bit little bit of a best of one advantage there, I think, is they have to guess whether I'm Goggles or Covert Cloak. And with the presence of Tyranitar, you might think just for synergy's sake you'd go Goggles, but nope, we are going Covert here. They're definitely pondering it pretty hard. If they go for Fake Out, there's also... Did oh, no Fake Out. Okay. Do they have a switch in to Earthquake? Murkrow. Yeah, fair enough. Um, they could be Offensive Sinistra. That'd be interesting. So Tyranitar would have been a great switch out here. They're going for a Terra. Okay. Terra Fairy, Terra Water is all pretty common. But glad to burn that early. Terra Water, that's fine. I'll take a strong Earthquake here. Choice Specs Machgacha would be pretty funny or something. Um, we'll see though. Good switch out for sure. If I had gone into the Tyranitar, I'm still kind of in, at risk, truthfully, of getting burned. That's the main issue with the Machigachi here. So, good chunk of damage. And they went for Scald Terra Water. That is so cool. Okay. I was not expecting that, and I don't get Tailwind up. Okay. That's really scary. Okay. Uh, I can freeze dry that. But I do have to be very, very, very careful now. I kind of just want to freeze dry. Hmm. Let's go freeze dry stomping tantrum. That seems solid. I think there's a chance I'll outspeed it. It depends on its speed tier. Let's go freeze dry probably stomping tantrum to cover for the incineroar switching in. Not ideal. Uh, I guess we go Earthquake, actually, just because we do have the Levitator on the field. 
Yeah, Scald Sinistro was not what I was looking for there. I at least got some damage there um, with the Garchomp to maybe put it in freeze-dry range if I'm lucky. But no, they are faster. Yeah, that's going to be really hard to beat. Does a fair amount of damage, and if they burn the Garchomp, we probably lose right away. But I think it's a good chance we lose anyways. They freeze to Cryognal, which of the two is what I would prefer. And they also burn the Garchomp. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, Tailwind Sinistra offensive, I have never seen. Really cool option from them. They heal all the damage back, and I don't think an Earthquake even would have knocked them out, and they are Citrus Berry anyways. Yeesh, okay. We have a very low defensive stat, so even a foul play from the Murkrow is going to do a lot here. I can't even really go for Haze or something cute like that, or uh, Icy Wind, because they have Haze on the Murkrow most likely to, for their Goldengo. Goodness, okay. Yeah, really cool team from them, honestly. I could try and stall out Trick Room or uh, Tailwind on their side. I don't think I'll be able to. Uh, Garchomp in the back looks very, very, very threatening to me if they have it, which they probably do. Yeah, really well done. The burns are annoying, because um, I would probably guaranteed knock them out next turn, but yeah, the Terrawater Skull Sinistra I was just not in any shape uh, prepared for. And it's not like I could really bring Gastron that easily into it, because they can just Macha Gacha for a one at KO. Foul play into the Garchomp, which is, I think, a misplay. Um, Garchomp isn't really threatening here, I think. Well, I guess it depends on who they have in the back. Maybe they have Typhlosion still, and I might have a win with um, Tyranitar still? It's possible. Big crit. Does that heal them out of range? Maybe. It's going to be close. Darn. Uh, the crit might have healed them out of range, but we get a freeze. Okay. I see light. Does Machikachi heal you? Or uh, unfreeze you? Uh, does it automatically thaw you, Machigacha? It wouldn't surprise me. This move is super... Upon execution, Machigacha will thaw the user if frozen. This move is so over to old man. Okay. Uh, I think I just have to go for Icy Wind. And hope they... I mean, they're going to go for Machigacha anyways. How many turns? Two turns? Okay. I think regardless, I should lose this, unfortunately. But my best play is probably just to... Hope they don't go for that? I don't know. Switch out Sinistra. Interesting. That's a little odd. Uh, I guess I should have gone for Earthquake that turn. There's no reason to Dragon Claw. Well, I guess... I mean, Dragon Claw is a little stronger, and I expected them to Macha Gacha, but that's really interesting. Very interesting. So I could have gone for Icy Wind or any number of plays, but I did not. So let's see. Foul play into the Garchomp. Honestly, that's fine. That's a bit of chip onto the onto that guy and a free switch into Tyranitar, I think. I'll probably have to double protect the Cragnal. The burn is actually starting to add up a little bit. But if it's Garchomp in the back, I probably always let always lost. I don't know though. We'll see. If we crit a rock slide, I guess there's a chance. But they should really just be going for Fake Out, Foul Play. Uh, fake Out into the Tyranitar, and then Foul Play into the Cryognal to make sure I don't get an attack off here. Let's go... Freeze Dry and Rock Slide. I'm playing, off a pro playing out a probably lost battle. I think we lost turn 1 when they just knocked out the Town Flame without me getting Tailwind up, but... Uh, the way they led was just really brilliant. Super solid Trick Room bluff when they actually had an offensive Sinistra. Prime, uh, threatening a KO I wasn't expecting. They definitely take their time. Uh, they're making good plays, so... Time well spent, but yeah. I don't think it should be that comp complicated for them. They're going to go for Fake Out into Tyranitar, which is what I said was correct. I could have gone for a double protect to try to cover for that, but... Okay, yeah. Doesn't matter. We actually sur survive, interestingly enough, and bring the Murkrow low. So, I guess this actually depends a fair bit. No, they can always go for Tailwind Parting Shot, and I think probably be fine. We'll see. 
Yeah, I think if they hadn't double burned, we might have had a decent shot to win if they have Typhlosion in the back. But honestly, if I had ever just um, survived... Oh, sorry, yeah, if my, Cry if my Cryogonal had survived the battle, I could have beaten the Garchomp in the back, but now I just literally have to hope that they have um, Typhlosion, which I don't expect, but is possible. I think Garchomp... Garchomp covers both my Garchomp and my Goldengo, which are the main offensive Pokemon. I think you're not going to bring the Typhlosion against the Tyranitar. Maybe we have a year time uh, win condition that I'm not seeing, though. They are taking a whole lot of time. I think Tailwind Parting Shot was safer there. Um, like, pretty low drawback. Sinistra comes in, I think Rock Slide should knock out the... Yeah, maybe they don't know that Machigacha is an instant thaw. I think they had that very safely in the previous turns. Okay, gotta be Garchomp. That does a lot of damage. Okay, we miss an attack. Lovely, it is the Murkrow. Alright. So now there's no way to win. Um, yeah, that's annoying, but it is what it is. Again, if it's Garchomp in the back, the miss didn't matter. If we were a little faster in Cinnaroar, fine. Okay, so they're going, for, going to go for Fake Out Foul Play, just round this out very slowly, um, which is fine, but a little annoying. Just because of how long they're taking. Okay, they finally move quick, cool. But Fake Out Foul Play is just doing way too much damage, and they are outspeeding my Tyranitar. If I was max speed, I maybe could knock them out, but nope, not the case. I would like to knock out the Murkrow just to see what's in the back. So maybe I could go for a low kick, but I don't but I don't think even with sand that will knock out. I could go for knockoff. I don't think it'll get there, so I do just have to get a rock slide and hope. I think at this point I'm in range of the Typhlosion. Okay, I get to see no matter what. Okay, Garchomp, yeah. None of that even mattered. They won pretty much turn one when I didn't get Tailwind up, and they uh, got the opportunities to hit my Cryogonal. Yeah, so honestly, Cryogonal was really good there. Three out of four of the Pokemon, I was able to hit for a super effective damage on the freeze dry. It's just the Sinistro was getting a little bit too hot for me with the burns, the crit, um, let them heal a little bit up more. I think the burn and the crit was a bigger deal than it seemed just because um, they could really slow play my Tyranitar in the late game and bring out the Garchomp at the last possible second, go for Dragon Claw and not even risk the Terra Flying being a beat to them, so really well played to them. I think the turn one Sinistra surprise was really well executed. Honestly, hats off to them for that. All right, my opponent has a interesting team, definitely very balanced. Um, a lot of setup potentially with the Volcarona with Quiver Dance, Nasty Plot Coldango, Swords Dance, King Gambit, but they could also be offensive, like Choice Specs Volcarona has been going all around on ladder. Same with Coldango, of course, Choice Specs, Nasty Plot, or, uh, Choice Specs, Terra Steel, very threatening. An Assault Vest on King Gambit is definitely an option as well. So, we can get Tailwind up pretty uncontested. uncontested. Cryogonal is pretty strong against some of their Pokemon, but it's definitely very slanted. Like, uh, forces Terra's out. Doesn't really threaten Rillaboom that aggressively. Uh, I think I'm going to bench the Cryogonal here, unfortunately. Talonflame Goldengo is tempting. The problem is, of course, that King Gambit a little bit. Gastrodon's cool against the Basque Legion if they go for Wave Crash early on, but they might not go for that at all. I think I like Goldengo just because I can go for a Make It Rain against everything except for the King Gambit and deal a lot of damage. I think... Hmm. I might go Cryagonal Garchomp though, just as a offensive lead it's pretty strong. Tyranitar is really strong against a lot of their Pokemon, and then late game Talonflame is not bad here, I think. Goldengo solid if I have Tailwind up and I've knocked out the King Gambit, but I think that might be easier said than done. Um, Tailwind might be just my best approach here. I think I EV'd my Tyranitar to outspeed max speed Dragapult, but Jolly Basque Legion outspeeds that by one point, so we might be speed tying their Basque. I think if I were going to 
run this team again, I would run the Tyranitar. Maybe max speed, or at least just a little bit faster than max speed Bask. There's the Basking King Gambit, so the Golingo would have been a little bit weird. Uh, they can go for a double up. Definitely. Let's double protect to see what they go for. Just playing it safe. They could go for like a... Okay, they switch out. Fair enough. Um, I could have gone for Icy Wind Earthquake. Rillaboom. So we're not able to fake out in front of that now, which is annoying. But we'll see what they lock into. If it is a lock. So yeah, I could have gone for Icy Wind Earthquake, but then I wouldn't have been doing that much damage and probably taking a lot more than I would have liked to. Wave Crash. I think if they're not if they're adaptability, that would have not knocked out. So Gastrodon would be lovely. I don't really have a switch in for this, unfortunately, but we can go for Freeze Dry and chip that in range of something. I'm going to Freeze Dry, Stomp. Okay, they break my Focus Ash. God, that does a lot of damage. Okay. Yeah, I am probably in range of... Wow, okay. Did I go for Stomp and not Dragon Claw? Ooh, that might come back to bite me because dragon claw might have ko'd here okay we get the ko with stomp anyways i was covering king gambit a little bit better with dragon claw there but um yeah if dragon claw doesn't ko and they get another freeze dry off that's really bad i think based off the fake out damage there's like a realistic chance the grassy glide just ko's here which is bad uh volcarona okay town flame tyranitar's looking very strong here i think Let's just go Icy Wind, honestly, Dragon Claw, or Stomping Tantrum. I could just switch out to Talonflame to preserve my Garchomp. But with Sucker Punch in the back, it's maybe not that high value, truthfully. Uh, maybe. The damage on the Talonflame might be valuable to hold on to. Let's just go for Icy Wind and damage onto the Volcarona isn't that valuable, whereas Rillaboom can maybe tear out of a hit here. Okay, doesn't matter on the Garchomp, we're just going to give them a bit of rocky, or a rough skin, and we're going to be able to go for Icy Wind first onto the Volcarona. So the reason I'm going for Icy Wind instead of a big freeze dry this turn is because I want to put the Rillaboom at a speed tier where I can just knock it out. Um, I have to be wary of going for that when the King Gambit enters the field, because if I go for Terra Flying... Okay, Fire Dance is fine. Uh, might not even knock out Cryognal. Okay, it does. Fair enough. Special Attack Ray is a little bit annoying, but we have the Volcarona right, right where we want it, I think. And, yeah. I kind of want to Brave Bird Low Kick the Rillaboom this upcoming turn. Because the King Gambit switch is very obvious on one of these Pokemon... And I think, yeah, I might Terra flying the Tyranitar here. It might be a little preemptive, though. I could Brave Bird Rock Slide or Will-O-Wisp. That's really good coverage. Yeah, Will-O-Wisp Rock Slide is pretty solid coverage here, I think. If I hit. Uh, let's think this through. So Volcarona is not really a huge threat at this point. I can go for Tailwind, Terra Flying, knock out the Rillaboom. Just play that safe. The question is, is Brave Bird low kick a knockout into the Rillaboom? And I'm not sure it is. Let's just go Tailwind, Terra Blast into... Yeah, the problem is... If they're covering Brave Bird this turn, they go for a Terra on the Rillaboom anyway, so I maybe should have just gone for Brave Bird Rock Slide, but they didn't switch out, so Low Kick would have been a wasted turn. And potentially I would have Low Kicked into the Volcarona, which would have, would have been very bad. Volcarona protects though, so that's good, and no Terrestrialization. We should be taking a KO and getting Tailwind up, so I think there's probably a more optimal play here to cover all of the real booms options as well as a king gambit switch in onto that slot but tailwind terror blast ends up being the play that covers 
what they do um, best, so works out fine. I think now... Gravebird... Hmm. I need the will o the King Gambit, I think. And... Okay, yeah, the Volcarona is really, really slow. It's Icy Winded and we have Tailwind up. So we have to handle the King Gambit somehow. I don't have Flare Blitz. If they're Terra Fire, that'd be a solid option for them, unfortunately. Terra Dark's a tricky one, too. Hmm. will wisp Rock Slide is an option for sure. Let's go for that, I think. will o -Wisp, will -O wisp Rock... I don't know. Terra Dark is going to be a problem, right? They go for Terra Dark, it's fine. We can cover a lot of their options with a Rock Slide to potentially flinch them. But I feel like it's just going to be the King Gambit going for... Let's go for Rock Slide just as a good coverage play. I think they probably should go for a Terrestrialization on the King Gambit. Yep, uh, so Rock Slide will knock out the Volk. It is Terra Fire, so Rock Slide ends up being actually my best play. Um, okay, we'll see what they go for offensively. If we double hit the Rock Slide, we're in a great spot. Ooh, Sucker Punch the Talon Flame I wasn't expecting, though. So will wisp obviously ineffective, both of us whiffing into each other. We go for Rock Slide, it was correct here. Terra Blast would have, I guess, been fine. It knocks out the Volcarona. But this is better just because of the abundance of damage we get into the King Gambit. Now I think we can just go for a knockoff plus uh, Brave Bird, and we should win. I think the damage there is sufficient. Yep. Grass is gone, so no more healing. I think, yeah, Brave Bird. Knockoff will knock them out without having to risk a miss of a Rock Slide. So was able to bring it to where the Rock Slide was able to knock them out, or at least get us in a position where... Oh yeah, knockoff definitely KO here. Yeah, so if we hit the Will-O-Wisp there, we're in a good spot. I think Terra Dark would have been the scariest there because potentially Terra Dark Black Glass is Sucker Punch. Even after Burned, Into gets the um, Tyranitar. I guess maybe with Sand, a couple Will-O-Wisps, I'm able to beat the King Gambit 1v1 with Brave Bird, but I think it would have been very, very close, honestly. So good game to them. I think that was a good example of the, like, not needing the... Talent Flame early on, and because I didn't bring it in the lead, it wasn't easily knocked out by their um, by their Pokemon, and because of that, I was able to just really easily pivot into a Tailwind mode later in the game because I had the um, offensive speed control of the Coragonal early, threatening a lot of their Pokemon. Okay, my opponent has a fairly standard Dragapult type of team, except instead of the typical Sneasler or uh, Redirection Pokemon, they have a Ferrigraph to block priority. Not a ton of priority on this team aside from the Talent Flame, so I'm all right with that, but yeah, interesting to note. I think Goldengo really opens a hole on their team, except for the King Gambit, so they might be forced to lead that, honestly. But I can Will O Wisp it if they do, so I like that a fair bit still. Uh, yeah, let's go Goldengo. Lead, Garchomp in the back is very solid, and then. I guess I might. If they get a Swords Dance up, I'm really potentially in trouble, so let's go. Tyranitar or Cryagonal in the back. I don't think Gastrodon is of much value here. And Cryagonal, unless I have Tailwind up, loses to Dragapult, loses to Rillaboom, Pre-Marina, I guess it beats fairly soundly. Volcarona's not good, and the rest also pretty bad. So outside of a very specific situation where I need an Icy Wind or a Haze to go off, I do think Tyranitar's general uh, bulk, power, and coverage is a little better into their team. Especially in Tailwind, I knock off the Dragapult, Terra Blast the Volcarona, Terra Blast the... Rillaboom, low kick the King Gambit, knock off their Fergraf. The only thing I don't threaten a knockout in one hit on their team is the Pre Marina, which we have the Garchomp and the uh, Goldengo to threaten. I might. Okay, so I have to be a little bit conscious of my Terrestrialization use this battle, because if they lead the King Gambit, my immediate instinct is okay, just Tailwind, Terra, steal the Goldengo, and do a ton of damage that way. But if I do that, I lose the ability to Terra Blast, or uh, defensively Terra Flying my Tyranitar against their Rillaboom, as well as knock it out with a Terra Blast. So they don't go for that though, which is fine. This uh, looks pretty good to me, honestly. 
I can Brave Bird make it rain if I want to. But I think Tailwind make it rain's a little stronger overall. Any reason to switch, potentially, but let's just get the free damage, I think. I'm not going to Terrastalize just yet, because I think it's really not necessary. Um, I might not knock out the Garchomp, or the uh, Dragapult in one. But the damage into the Volcarona is super valuable. So they're really threatened. My easiest, most obvious play is Tailwind to make it rain, but I could also have, um, you know, if I expect their Dragapult to switch out to preserve it, I could Brave Bird make it rain as well, but nope, we're going to see a Terrestrialization coming out from one of their Pokemon. Interesting. Maybe the Dragapult? Sure, yeah. I'm happy to see the Terra Burn this early, though. Terra Dragon, not Terra Steel, which means make it rain still going to do a ton of damage here. Okay, Protect the Volcarona I don't follow. Maybe they were scouting out Power Gem, which I might have gone for, honestly, if I had it, but no, just going to be a free Make It Rain this turn. Might not knock out the Dragapult, but I think it's fine if we don't, because we're threatening another one next turn with Brave Bird Make It Rain. Yeah, it lives on just a hair, unfortunately, but also maybe fortunately. Like, we're going to live both these and be threatening the Volcarona next turn with Brave Bird. Yep, not even a KO here, and we outspeed the Dragapult, and like I said, not a whole lot of switch-ins for this, I think. Brave Bird Make It Rain should be solid, I think. Um, maybe should have checked my back Pokemon here. They're going to switch out the Volk. Fair. They could go into King Gambit, but then I'll just Will-O-Wisp that later in the game. Yep, fair enough. Um, unfortunately, don't lose the Talon Flame here just yet. But I should have a fairly free Will-O-Wisp switch to Tyranitar in the subsequent turn, so I'm not, like, that stressed about it. Garchomp, honestly, as well, is a really solid switch. Um, they might try and knock me out with Fake Out on the Talonflame. I am very bulky, so I doubt that will execute. What's cool is they've gone for the Terrestrialization with pretty little value out of it overall. They got a little bit more damage on the Talonflame, but now we're certain that the King Gambit is not... Able to go for Terra Fire and be immune to the Will-O-Wisp. Oh yeah, we're so far out of range. Covert Cloak, also very valuable this turn. Let's go... Ooh. So I don't want to switch out the Goldengo necessarily just yet. Hmm. I could go to Garchomp, and I think I will. Because Tyranitar really just 1v1s the rest of their team. And I don't want to switch in on a... Um, high horsepower or wood hammer onto this guy. Losing the Garchomp wouldn't be ideal, but I think the Goldengo should be able to win the game in the late game if I get Tailwind up again, which I should be able to do fairly easily. Um, I don't know. I think Will-O-Wisp into King Gambit is fine here. To knock out the Talonflame, they have to wood hammer it, I think, which means they have to protect wood hammer, giving me the free switch to Garchomp. So Goldengo was in a bit of a weird spot there, but yeah, they just don't expect Cover Cloak, and now we get a Will-O-Wisp off. Yep, Sucker Punch. Not gonna work, thankfully. And we hit the Will-O-Wisp. Yeah, that's lucky that we hit. Now we have a pretty free Stomping Tantrum KO into the King Gambit. And we can honestly just Brave Bird the um, Rillaboom if we want. We can Will-O-Wisp it, but I think that's maybe a little too risky. How many turns of Tailwind left? Just one more tempted to just go into Goldengo, but I think uh, with Tyranitar in the back, we should have this pretty clean. With just a Brave Bird and Dragon Claw into the Rillaboom. Um, I don't know about this, actually. If they Sucker Punch, the... little close, honestly. So if they go for Sucker Punch this turn... Okay, they go for Grassy Glide into the into that guy, which was pretty aggressive. Not a knockout even with the crit. And they Sucker Punch the Garchomp, yeah. My goal here is just to get rid of the Rillaboom, because the King Gambit can't really beat the... Uh, unless they're an Assault Vest set, they can't really beat my Tyranitar. And even if they are Assault Vest low kick, then I'd probably just outspeed it and low kick it. 
So I went after the Rillaboom. Uh, I think they should have Sucker Punched the Talonflame and maybe would hammer the Garchomp, but um, then they're probably just going to lose to my Tyranitar. I don't know, maybe they could have won. If they had crit the Woodhammer, they might have been able to win that. But yeah, I do feel like Terraflying, in most situations Terraflying, uh, Tyranitar should have been able to clean the game up. Now we just go to that. They've already burned their, burned their Terra, so we can go to Terra. Our own Tyranitar to make sure we don't have to go for Rock Slide into the Volk. Maybe there's a way we lose that. If they double Heat Wave burn me, but I still think we would win that situation. Yeah, because we have Speed the King Gambit if they're Assault Vest, knock that out. Volcarona cannot speed the Garchomp unless they're Choice Scarf, which is very unlikely they already used Protect in this game. And yeah, unless they burn us with an attack, we should have this closed out. Maybe Rage Powder Volcarona would be able to burn my Garchomp. But then, yeah, I don't think the Burn King Gambit has a way out. So I feel like pretty well executed game once again. Uh, actually able to leverage the Goldango in the offensive slot. I think the Protect and the Volcarona really let me get ahead. Uh, scouting out maybe Power Gem. But yeah, they just cancel out. They see they don't really have the offense or, or honestly the defense against uh, the Tyranitar to win out there. So good game to them. I think once again, just a really impressive game for the uh, offensive core of Talonflame, Tyranitar, Goldengo, and Garchomp, which isn't a huge surprise, even in like earlier regulations. Um, I think Steven Maya got top eight at a regulation B regional with a similar core of Pokemon. So it's just generally very strong. Okay, my opponent has an interesting team. Yeah, very offensive Tailwind team with Drifblim, Indeedy, Garchomp, uh, Oranguru, probably, or not Oranguru, Araquanid, probably with Wide Guard, Toxtricity, and Annihilate. So lots of potential Boom Burst friends. Um, could be a Trick Room option with the Imprisoned Trick Room, Indeedy, and the Araquanid. So they can pivot into that if I go too hard on the Trick Room mode. I really like Talonflame. Tyranitar as a lead against everything but Garchomp, truthfully. Uh, Goldengo's pretty solid too. Yeah, I actually like Goldengo a lot. Yeah, that seems pretty cool. I can go for Tailwind, Icy Wind onto them. I guess the problem is a couple things, but should be fine. Garchomp's also like a pretty solid mid-ground lead where I'm able to threaten a lot and I can easily switch out into the Tyranitar if I don't like my spot. Uh, Gastrodon could be cool against certain Pokemon, but against most it's pretty mediocre. Let's think about going Kragnal back as an Earthquake partner for late game Garchomp. Even though Goldengo is very threatening, I haven't been bringing it a lot. I feel like the core of Talonflame, Kragnal, Garchomp, Tyranitar is really solid, even though there's some anti-synergy with the Sandstream and the Talonflame Scale Wings and the... Um, Focus Ash on the Kragnal, which you do have to play around a little bit. I think offensively that core is just really, really strong together, and I've been enjoying it quite a lot. Alright, Garchomp Annihilate. That's good by me. I feel like that's a fairly free Tailwind Earthquake if I want it, or Brave Bird Earthquake. There's not a whole lot they can do about that. Because I can... Uh... Yeah, that seems solid. The problem is if I go for Tailwind, Earthquake. Let's just go for a double attack here. I go for Tailwind, Dragon Claw, and let them go for Final Gambit, potentially, which I like. Hmm. The only question is if they go for a... If I get this damage off, is it winnable from there? I think maybe... I'm going to go for Tailwind Dragon Claw just because I don't think they have to go for Terra here. Okay, Earthquake would have been better. Annoying, but fine. So they maybe go for Final Gambit here. If that's the case, it's fine, I guess. But yeah, Earthquake would have been super advantageous if they go for Final Gambit. But it could also be a bulk upset. Nope. Okay, Earthquake would have been entirely better. So I thought it was just really obvious that Earthquake covered that. So they wouldn't go for it. Maybe they go for Coaching Protect, but unfortunately not the case. They trade their Annihilate for my Garchomp and a Wasted Turn of Tailwind, which is probably solid for them. 
definitely annoying, but we at least have the Tailwind now. We can start taking advantage of that. Maybe will with the Garchomp and handle their other Pokemon with the Tyranitar. So yeah, they... Hmm. I guess their only way of getting Tailwind up is if they bring the Drift Bloom in. And then they need to switch to Indeedee to make it happen. Toxtricity, that's fine. They can go for Discharge or Overdrive or something like that, which is okay. I think Brave Bird knockoff probably knocks out the Toxtricity. So I'm going to go for that. They could protect it, but uh, I think taking the knockoff Brave Bird into the Toxtricity is higher value than Will-O-Wisping the Garchomp here, even though Dragon Claw can do a lot. If we force the Terra out, then we can Rock Slide it next turn. I might not be able to beat it with Kragnall, I do have to keep that in mind. If we can force a Terra, then we're in really solid shape against it, but I'm not sure that we can that easily. I think Brave Bird knockoff should knock out Toxtricity though. Knockoff's a really, really strong move off of Tyranitar from an adamant one, which I believe we are. Gonna be close though. If they Terra away from their typing, we should be fine. I'll run the Calc now just to see how bulky the Toxtricity has to be to tank this, but... Tyranitar's knockoff always impresses me. Yeah, 79 to 90. So Brave Bird probably chips in into range. Yeah, I think so. No terrestrializations from them, so could have gone for Will-O-Wisp. If they go for Rock Slide here, I am in massive trouble. Because <laughs> I just tear it into... Uh, I lose the Talon Flame, and they get a lot of damage on the Talon Tyranitar. So they were Specs, cool. And it was Stomping Tantrum, so... Double power stomping tantrum this turn, but nothing to use it against. If you, were no, if you weren't aware, if Garchomp fails an attack in the previous turn, stomping tantrum doubles in power, and going for a ground type move into a flying type uh, is an example of that. So, now I think we go Will O Wisp and probably just Terra Blast into the Araquanid. We've got to be conscious of sand turns because we can stall it. Probably not going to be able to stall out the sand turns, unfortunately. Let's go Will-O-Wisp and Terra Blast into the Araquanid, I think. Could Rock Slide, too. Hmm. Yeah, the Araquanid might reverse sweep me here, unfortunately. Gotta be conscious of that. I think I just... Maybe I should have knocked off the Araquanid um, to get rid of a... Maybe a Splash Plate or a Mystic Water or something like that. Because I think without that, they wouldn't be able to knock me out. And yeah, they just protect anyways, but... No Protect on the Garchomp, which means we should be getting a Will-O-Wisp off if we hit, which we do. Okay, that'll really limit their damage output. The point where Kragonal might be able to 1v1 them. We'll see. Uh, but I think next turn I'll probably go for a knockoff Brave Bird into the Araquanid, because they have to Terra to survive that. Cool, not a lot of damage. We are a pretty bulky Talonflame. Oh yeah, Burn plus Life Orb is really going to start doing a number on this Garchomp for the Cryogonal even comes in. I feel like it's likely a Grass Terra on Araquanid. That's its most common Terra type. But yeah, Brave Bird will cover that, of course. And then what else could they be? Maybe Fairy? Could go for Knock Off. Let's go Knock Off just to get some damage off. Guaranteed damage. Because I think Brave Bird Knock Off KOs. Or at least puts them in the sand range. And they're going to Terra anyways out of their bug typing, I imagine, which is going to resist it. Yep. Cool. So we could have... Yeah, Water type. Knockoff is going to do a bit more than Terra Blast here, as well as remove any offensive item they might have. So now it's looking very good for Cryogonal in the back. We outspeed everything. We go for a uh, Freeze Dry into the Garchomp if we want to. Yeah, that... Actually, it just ends up knocking out the Araquanid. Very high special defense stat, but the defense stat is not that crazy on it. So even if they knock out the Tyranitar, Cryogonal, of course, is in the wings to clean it up here. Clear Amulet. I hope they get to see the Cryogonal, but I don't think they will. Unfortunate for them. I might just switch it out, just to, you know, swag out on them. Yeah, I do feel like the the Annihilate play doesn't make a lot of sense when you just can't beat the Tailwind in the back, honestly. Like, if they have had a competing Tailwind mode and a more aggressive Tailwind team, which they kind of do, 
Oh, Tom Flame just staring us down, huh? Okay. Fair enough, big guy. Um, we can just go forward. Double attack. They cancel out. I wanted to Brave Bird and knock myself out and let the Karaganal come in, but of course, yeah. They see the writing on the wall that it's over. So good game to them. I do think the... Um, against a Tailwind team with Garchomp, yeah, the the Kragonal is really solid. Like, and if, even if you think about it, like the Whimsicott Garchomp team that won the Dortmund Regional Championship, Kragonal does really well against that pair. Like, very high special defense that enforces a Terra out of the Garchomp. You can just Icy Wind. They do go for the Terra and just knock it out with your um, your Garchomp and Tailwind in the, in the rest of the battle. So. Overall, really solid um, showcase for Kragonal. I do really love the Talonflame, Garchomp, Cryo, Tyranitar core. It's been serving really well in these battles. So that's going to do it for Battles Today featuring Steven Brown's Tailwind Cryogonal team that was able to get Day 2 at the Louisville Regional. Really cool team. I really love the combination of Talonflame, Cryogonal, Garchomp, Tyranitar. Honestly, Goldengo, even though it comes less, I feel like the core 4 of uh, Tailwind, Cryogonal, Levitate plus Earthquake, Garchomp, Really, really potent. Uh, you don't even have to bring the Tailwind option all the time if they're a bit slower of a team. You can just go for the Icy Wind Coragonal and get a lot of mileage out of that. And then, of course, the Tyranitar is really solid defensively to uh, just beat a lot of teams that otherwise don't have great answers into the both uh, great coverage of Tyranitar and the really awesome special defensive bulk of the Pokemon. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to use the team for yourself, I have the rental code in the top right of the video and the EV spreads in the description below. If you want to see more, please subscribe, leave a like on the video, and let me know which other teams you want to see on the channel. Hope you guys enjoyed, and with all that being said, peace y'all.